All right, well, let's go ahead and get started. You guys, I'm John Young with Patrick Engineering, Patrick Geospatial Services. Now that I don't have to go rapid fire in front of everybody, I can breathe and actually speak to you in a normal pace and actually tell you some fun stuff. Like, um, I have been around the CFTA water cooler back since it was the National Collegiate, whatever the one was before the other two in 2007, 2008, with Esri, because I was with Esri for about 17 years. Lee, I know a lot of faces where I was started the facilities practice a long time ago. In fact, Don and I were just talking about the first indoors data model effort in 08 that we started in the DC office here. But it's been a wonderful journey. Um, now I'm on the consulting side. Enjoy the heck out of it because I get to play with toys and like you know put together new ideas. And, and frankly, they're starting to pan out. And we're going to talk to you about some of that today. Um, so I had a practice over there and um, have a great team. And with that, let's just jump right into it. So. Uh, I can't say the name of the government agency, although some of you may pick up on it. Um, but that is, of course, out of con you know, concern for information sharing, even though I have openly actually given this presentation with um, some folks where the name is revealed. But let's make sure we preserve anonymity. And it's all about how you can integrate, I say VR, but I mean reality capture. People call virtual reality all kinds of things, but it's reality capture, generally speaking. Um, and how you can integrate that with your CMMS, your computerized maintenance management or enterprise asset management and GIS, and it, here again, at the, at the end of the day, it's all about improving operations, facility operations, safety, and planning and such. So let's get underway. Um, all right, the why. We talked a little bit about this earlier because we kept talking about smart campus, but for this client and like a number of you, at the end of the day, it is kind of where there's this whole notion of the digital twin. It came up in a few presentations, but what are we doing? Natural world, natural environment, built environment, all the zeros and ones flying around in the air that are telling us information about the things that we need to know to answer business questions, pull it into this digital reality, create this digital twin for us. So that is what this client's driver is, okay? Um, relate it to Smart Campus um, for, um, that, in other words, I'm trying to make the relationship because we do work at the universities, but for this particular one, it happens to be a government client. I happen to love this picture of the Port of Rotterdam. This is an Esri. Um, snag and they'll love it all day long, but that's that's what I what you see sort of on this slide. Anyway, um, what's so special? Uh, the client that we that and for whom we've done our work um, is responsible for managing is res responsible for managing facilities that preserve a lot of antiquities, national treasures. Why is that important? Because the environment that they have to set up and the size and dimension and scale of the Mechanical spaces is tremendous, and you'll get to see some of that. And so what we have definitely proven out here is that if you can do what we're doing for this client, everything scales down from there, and it very much applies to uh, an institution, a college institution, or other smaller government institu institution. So we are all about making sure that Beethoven's sheet music looks as good as the day it was written, or Alexander Graham Bell's patents look as good as the day they were crafted uh, as well, that kind of thing. Okay, um, I'm going to give you the goal and the expected value that the client had up front, and then I'm going to tell you what actually resulted at the end. Okay, so first of all, it was I have people that are running around all the time having to physically visit assets, and I want to reduce that. Number one. Number two, I want to help, I want to do work planning more efficiently for myself and all the contractors and trades people that I work with, and I also want to make sure that folks can respond to work that has to happen, whether that is totally responsive ad hoc, right, service request oriented, or whether that is preventative maintenance oriented and things like that. I want to be able to train folks and without having to run all around multiple campuses and buildings. Um, so whether that be new staff or contractors, and it is literally, this is the scenario you hear all the time. Let me show you the one I'm talking about, but without having to physically go there over and over and over again. And so in some cases, when you're working with multiple tradespeople, that can be a many miles, right? You know, the folks that actually do like that, where they have the, you know, the pedometer or whatever it's called on their wrist, and it shows you, oh, I've done 20 miles today. No wonder my knees are killing me. Um, anyway, but then there's also just time savings on a number of levels for doing that. And the other thing, when you kind of, when you kind of circle it all in on the O&M side, it is all about mitigating risk and, and improving operational awareness and being able to do safety planning. Okay. All right. Let's just go ahead and jump right into the guts of it. Um, so then... How do we answer the mail then on improving the uh, improving facility operations for our client? So number one, we actually will deliver the digital twin. What's novel, what's new, is that last year, some of you remember, I started talking about how you could take advantage of using reality capture. And so since then, we've been putting it into place with client examples. This is one of them. 
And so, and actually we're working with a number of reality capture technology now, te technologies now, not just the one that I talked about last year. And so, you guys, number one, do you know what this means when I say reality capture? Immersive 360 imagery is another name for it. Um, what's interesting here is it, it actually may or may not include LiDAR. It may not include just doing a LiDAR point cloud. It actually means panoramic images, but even more than that, it means an immersive, continuous capture of so many images that when you stitch them all together with the processing that a lot of these companies provide, you feel like you're there when you go to the inside the image, okay? But here's the other thing. What a lot of folks don't realize is I can actually track the coordinate space of an image with the coordinate space on a map so that if I want to go to the actual position of an asset in an immersive environment, I can link these things. And that's what you're gonna see in just a minute. And that's what the client wanted. So that's what we did. So I think you saw in the, um, what do they call them, Spark sessions, I presented this, but I showed the number of vendors and stuff that we work with. But the idea was here, first, capture the immersive information and tag the assets and relate it to the assets at both an equipment and work order level for asset and maintenance management. And then, do an extraction of this information so that we can actually locate those assets in real world space and then hook them all three together so they can all talk to each other so that when I need that operational awareness, I choose the app that suits my needs the most, okay? And so that's what we've done for the client. And I'll give you a little bit more about the how we did it as, at, the, at the end as well. Okay, so what do we do? Um, for this first foray, and there's a lot of buildings in the queue, um, 85,000 square feet, um, three different floors, five distinct operational spaces in one very, very large building. Um, and it was all operational space only, not the entire building. So just air handler unit rooms, transformer vaults, switchgear rooms, guts of a building, things that are near and dear to facility operators. Um, and that included then processing or scanning the space, doing asset um, tag identification and verification with the CMMS system to make sure that I was all synced up. Um, it involved tagging within the virtual or reality capture space, about 1,650 assets. I will underscore, you don't tag everything because if you did, it would just be a sea of dots sometimes inside the image. And honestly, it gets a little unwieldy. So it's really sort of like critical assets by category. And you guys know which what, for major building systems what a lot of these are. And uh, to kind of keep it at that level, um, the database happens to be TMA. And so we had to make sure that we could integrate and be um, compatible with web TMA and, and mobile TMA. And then the other piece, of course, was the 3D feature extraction. Basically get it ready for ArcGIS integration. Now, at the end of the day, we provided examples of what this looks like in ArcGIS for the client and what a future consideration for integration with ArcGIS indoors would look like. And so that was all part of the process as well. And you guys may, may be familiar with some of this, but you, with a lot of these technologies, you can extract the point cloud, so the X, Y, Z data, um, OBJ files, georeference that, and then begin to do a lot of asset tagging. And of course, there's some automation that you can apply in there too, which is kind of crux as a, or clutch as well. All right, so this is what a 75,000 square foot air handler unit room broken up into multiple sections looks like. That's about a 6,000 square foot building, multiple floors, our headquarters. Um, and then, you know, once it's captured, you know, you've got reality and I can show you what that looks like. Of course, you can dive right into that reality. And so this is just an example at sort of its scale of what we, what we did. And I, I will say that 1,500 of the 1,650 assets are in this room, okay? All right, so once you're in TMA, you wanna be able to go in, search for, find a piece of equipment in the building. This is actually not the client's site, but it's on purpose. Um, but then also find an asset record or a maintenance record. Once you're there and you find the record, you want to be able to click on what this particular company is calling VR Viewer so that you can then reveal the environment, okay? Now, that doesn't do it any justice and it's not the best screen capture in the world, but I don't have the live demo of the asset management integration, but I do have some other stuff that I'm gonna show you of what it looks like when you're in there. But now you're immersed and you're actually right in front of the piece of equipment that you, you had just uh, clicked on. And you'll understand the difference between just doing panoramic shots in just a second. I think, I think you'll get that in a second. Um, the other thing was to be able to improve not only your work with a web cl client or web app, but also a mobile um, app. And so in this case, that was also enabled, right? So you go in, you find a piece of equipment, you find a work order, and you wanna get to a place where you can actually view it on your phone and interact with that data 
and so you actually fly into the location of where that actual, in this case, what is it? Um, it's a, a fan. Um, and then, okay, well, I see the fan, but, and I have to do maintenance on that, but what about the motor right next to it? And so in this case, click on the motor, and then, and then sort of this next, well, next iteration is hyperlinks that jump you back and forth. So now if I wanted to know about the motor, that's on the fan, and why do I have maintenance come and do on that? I could jump back and go straight to the asset management system to that record, okay? It's a number of advantages for jumping back and forth. And this is, you guys have started to see this. You can add hyperlinks on text. I could link to the manual on how to fix the thing. I mean, I keep seeing, hearing so much about this, and, and, and I love it. I think it's beautiful that people are saying that, but it's, it's super simple, <laughs> okay? So you, can, you need to have the information about the PDF for how you fix things, but you can easily link that stuff these days. It's, um, it's pretty commonplace. Um, okay, so that was part of our mission then we started to discover a number of additional benefits, and I'll get back to this towards the end. I'm here in a few. But as you start scanning and using these technologies and start to tag assets within them, you realize that, wow, not only am I verifying a lot of data in my asset management system, but I'm, I have a great tool for communicating project status. And so, and, or, or even the process of going through doing a project like this. Um, in other words, I've either validated that that tag is true or it's not. And that's what the case is in, in this case with blue and yellow, okay? And so we could literally communicate with each other without having to go upstairs, downstairs, you know, to, to look at the asset like this. Or, or we could say it does need to be visually inspected, go and ensure that this is the actual tag on the asset or something like that. So lots of um, additional benefits were discovered throughout this, this project. Um, all right, so in the next phase, um, or, or one of those three kind of pillars or steps that I mentioned, was to extract and integrate uh, 3D um, spatial data. And I'm going to show you some live demos of this here in just a second because death by PowerPoint gets rough sometimes, although the 3D stuff is cool. So extract the point cloud, pull it into GIS, and then actually start to tag assets within GIS because, again, the goal is a 3D data set which you can make look awesome inside of whatever app you want, 2D, 3D, use an RGIS Indoors app or a related app. Okay, so let's do some cartoons, some picture pages. Um, how many of you use RGIS Pro? Fair number, okay, cool. All right, just use Pro. Uh, whoops, wrong one. Don't hit that button, John, hit that button. So this will kind of give you a little bit of an idea. Whoa, whoa, that's, that's this thing. Okay. So, <laughs> Anyway, this just shows uh, part of the project. Now, we just did this at one point in time. I'm like, capture that video, I can use it again, but it's the whole floor of these at this point. Um, but what's nice is, yeah, you get a visualization. You can see that once you're in there, these assets have been tagged, and I don't know why the video is doing this. Um, it doesn't normally, but maybe it's because I'm pushing it through this, this um, deal here. But you can see that assets have been tagged. Um, they're coded by type, I think, at a high level. But now, now you get the power of GIS. I can query, I can filter, I can sort, I can find on, on by asset by type or when the maintenance is due, you get a selected set. And I can then immediately zoom into that asset, okay? And so I can, well, I can, I can click on the pop-up for that asset. I could zoom in if I wanted to. And it'll automatically, in this case, when I click on a particular link for the immersive experience, fly me right in there and go to the location of that asset. What's funny about this particular recording that was captured is it actually didn't quite fly to the exact spot because it would have flown right there. I'm gonna show you another example of that in just a second. So in this case, this strobe in, in particular, okay? All right, so I guess you, yeah, question. That link that you just showed that pulled you into the other thing, that's not part of RGS Pro, what is that? Right, so the particular technology that we started with, um, I'll say that it's not gonna be the technology that we end up with, um, and there's all kinds of security concerns for different te technologies that you use. Uh, was Matterport, okay? But the other technologies that we're working with, and I'll talk about the ones that we're vetting now we're gonna be moving forward with are things like NavViz or Indoor View. Two so other good like server that you have to store everything and then to that? It, depending on your security um, requirements, yes. Because it's not something that's natively stored in GIS database? That is correct, okay. right. But what's cool is that the so deep linking and embedding now is, is pretty straightforward. And so what, what ends up happening, it's a good question, is the coordinates for where you are in the image and the space get embedded in the URL. And so you can actually, you can go straight to that spot. You're just about instructions to the other server that I have to make it Yeah. Yeah, that or like in this, or in cases where we're working with clients, we offer the ability to host that 
you know, in an AWS environment, which we can throw whatever level of security at that. We can be fed ramp if you want or whatever. You know, sure. you can get as deep as you want. John, a second ago you showed going from GIS into Matterport. You're looking around, you see, oh, I forgot this, and you click on that, can you get back to Matterport? You sure can. Yeah, you just hyperlink it right back. And frankly, that's even easier. That's even easier. Okay. Yeah, because Matterport enables you uh, the ability to, to um, do hyperlinks, as does NAVIS, as does Indoor View with the panoramic viewer, right? As another option. Okay, so once I have that data, then it's like, all right, well, give me the realm of the possibility with this data inside of a 2D or 3D app. And so that's what we've done. Um, let me just show you real quick so you can understand what a little bit that looks like. So I'm in here and I look for an asset um, 20734 for fun. You know how it does, it finds it. This is the 2D version, right? But regardless of the version that I'm in, I click on it and it, it doesn't just take me into um, the immersive experience, it will actually take me to the location of, of that, that asset. And so I'm talking slow and pausing because I'm hoping that this thing will load a little bit faster and it did. Um, and so you can see there's a lot of assets tagged and it's a large floor and it's, it's a large space, but in this case it goes straight to where it's supposed to go positionally. And if you look up in the URL, you will see the coordinate position for the camera there. So we're, it is in a way, and it sounds, it may sound a little bit wonky, but it's kind of true. You are able to associate the geography of the map with the geography of the image. And that's pretty critical for a number of reasons further downstream. And I'll talk about what that, and it's, it's very important. And I'll bring it up in just a moment when it comes to, oh, well, maybe I want to be able to route my folks there to be able to answer, right? work orders faster and stuff like that. So there's a relationship between how all these things go together that, that promote and, and provide, I should say, advanced analytics that you can provide to your, your operators and your tradespeople later on, but with easy to use tools, that's kind of the key. Um, just just for, for grins, this data is 3D, okay? Um, this is the same room in 3D, perform the same kind of query, it'll do the same exact thing that just happened. Okay, and it'll fly right into the, the building, just so you know that it's inherently 3D. And so if you wanted to use it in 3D apps, um, no problem, right? Boom. Okay. Um, I think I'm doing really good on time. Awesome. All right, so how do we do all this? Um, pretty straightforward. Um, there is some secret sauce in places, but Honestly, I even think I mentioned this last year, you know, collecting the data, or actually, how many of you guys are already using Matterport in the room? One, two, three. Rick, I know you do. Um, and, and actually, I've talked, there, there are actually a number of people using those, a number of folks using those cameras. And it's nice because I would call it, it's real estate grade. It's probably the best way to describe it. Uh, it does, I mean, if you extract the point cloud, it's pretty darn accurate. Um, but you are moving a tripod camera around. You're not pushing a rollable cart. So what I tend to think and what I've learned is that if I have individual buildings, I can go in and do that at a pretty good price per square foot. But the reality is you probably can do it yourself for a pretty good price with some student interns, honestly. And that's the fair assessment of it. Now, if you tell me, hey, John, 23 million square feet, I'm going to do it, or I'm going to call Rick. A combination of Rick and I are going to go in there. We're going to help you do that because we can totally do it at like you know fractions of cents, you know, to do that kind of thing. And we'd use different equipment, but you can still. There are really good technologies out there that will give you that immersive 3D environment and allow you to tag assets inside of it. So we collect the digital reality. We want to make sure that we can verify. In our case, we're very much focused on the assets side in addition to space. So we want to verify assets. Um, then it's Keeping it simple, ID, ID the critical assets in the digital reality, um, make sure that I've got those listed, I've got those captured, and then begin to integrate those with the system of record, whichever systems of record you're working with, honestly. If you're using a, if you're using a contemporary database web service, you know, RESTful web service based system and with easily usable APIs, it can be supported, let's put it that way. Um, and then you start making the apps available to users, right? So if it's your operations or your safety managers, your contractors, trade staff, um, and educating them on how to use the tools. All right, so value. What happened? A, we're just starting to roll this into a production environment, but the value's already been recognized. Because as we go through the process, 
it's almost like, you know, uh, the client's a kid in the candy factory and they want to make sure, hey, tradesperson, did, did I show you? Because, you know, they've already had access to the scans and, and the start of the integration with uh, the asset management system and it's gone really well. Can I pause you right there? Yeah, sure. They recognize the value, but was there value defined up front for this business case? Up Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, and so, so when you look at the, there were very distinct business cases actually um, that involved they all focused on how to improve facility operations of the individual um, uh, stakeholder, of each individual stakeholder. Mm -hmm. There sure were. And so what's cool, though, is so those st stakeholders' needs are, are being met. Right? Now, I, can't, I, I don't have a fully baked ROI story for you yet, but it's pretty exciting. In other words, the trajectory is looking good. Let's put it that way. That said, just even in the whole project management side of going through this, and I saw a recent presentation at, uh, on, on, on the use of VR equipment with um, an airport um, where the same kind of thing was discovered. We were like, oh, wow, <laughs> we're discovering that too. And it wasn't us discovering it. It was our client communicating it back to us saying, that, that would take us days, not just like an hour or two or you know, a handful of minutes to figure that out with a contractor or multiple phone calls in this kind of thing. Can I ask a follow-up question? Sure. So, a sales question for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have, do you have We, we do. Yeah, we do. So. Yep. No, no, absolutely we do. Um, and that breaks out, right, by not just technology, but the value of the integration as well. Because, I mean, like was said earlier today, it might have been one of your talks, but, you know, the focus on the people and the need and the use case, absolutely at the front of it. No, no, this, this, is, this was not an occasion of um, technology looking for a problem. It was more of a problem needing a technology. Yeah, that's fair. Um, all right, so the first one was improving facilities project management, okay, visual progress tacking, tracking, being able to color code and communicate project status and needs. That's something that's already been identified. And then the other one was, wow, if the data that was collected from the point cloud is pretty darn accurate, we can generate 2D floor plans and 3D, 3D data sets, Revit files, if you want, from that data for future retrofits and renovations without having to hire somebody else to do it because I've already got the data. Now, in this case, it would be specific to the rooms that were captured because the whole building wasn't done, but that's fine. Awesome. Bless you in advance. I saw it coming. All right, next steps. What are we doing? Um, production system rollout, number of additional buildings, um, and we are vetting more advanced LIDAR. And or Actually, we're already, we were already picking the ones that we're going with, but more uh, advanced LIDAR and VR scanning technologies, uh, in particular NavViz and Indoor View. And then we're also exploring how we are going to be utilizing ArcGIS indoors, called Indoor GIS, ArcGIS indoors. That's what it is now, today. Um, apps and options for how we can, can utilize that tech as well. And that is me. And I am done with a good bit of time left. So, yes, sir. So, due to the success of that unnamed agency doing all the other stuff they were doing previously, is that why you got the spinoff for this, or were you first before they started doing the other thing? I, I know about that. So. Right, right. So I'm trying to figure out how to yeah, best answer your question. Um, they identified a challenge. I brought the solution. They said, let's do it. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, yeah. you know. That's awesome. Now, yeah, now. Does it matter that I've been in the industry for 20 years and knew the client for 10? Of course it does. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, there's a trust factor there for sure. And they know that I'll do whatever it takes to make sure the right, we're using the right technology to fit the need and that it's cost effective. That big thing, IT will stamp it, especially when you're government, right? And uh, that's what we've done. So, yeah. So to summarize, um, so you basically did, you did a point cloud and then did like high def into your photometry, is that, and then did, and then did asset tagging? And, and, that, you, and, you, and use technologies that allow me to tag, efficiently tag those assets that's within it? That's really interesting. So kind of how many did you do, how easy is that? Because that's really the challenge. That's, it is. Because uh, you could walk through with a camera, right? And you could figure that out. Oh, you could walk through with a, I mean, right. everybody's so got to. But the asset tagging, so what's, what's the special? What's special about the asset tagging? Because, I mean, I have one customer that they have thousands of buildings. Mm -hmm. Like, they, like they, 
they, they don't even know how to wrap their head around <laughs> what level of detail and how much they should do and how long it's going to take. The photometry, you could get a sense. You could put like a number of hours per building mm -hmm. to do that. But the rest, how do, you, how do you think about that? Right. So, I mean, there are definitely metrics that we use to price out what we're doing, you know, in terms of delivering an offering. But it kind of gets down to what you're looking for. I mean, Rick that was just here, I mean, we, we I say we resell, we resell our service providers for a few of these folks and um, do, that do this kind of work at scale. So millions and millions of square feet, right, in a fail swoop kind of thing. But it just depends on what you want. I mean, Small there's... Tag, like, right, right, right. Okay, so, so... Is that a manual process? I mean, how do you, is it an automa is there on, any automation in there? Um, both. Both. The latter part is secret sauce. <laughs> of course, it has to be, right? Only asking about that. Right, 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 right. <laughs> I knew you would ask that question. <laughs> No, no, and so and so some of these vendors actually do specialize that, but there also are. Could you like tell us about not not so much about what you do that's special, if that's secret, but what we can communicate to what I can communicate to my customers that is possible that they could think about in terms of sizing. So if they have to do, mm -hmm. if they have a thousand buildings and each one has let's say five floors and has a floor print of let's say ten thousand, like what does that mean in terms of asset tagging that's appropriate for O and M? Well, so then I have to always put that, let me push it back with another question. Okay, so you have major building systems. How many of those do you, and those classifications of assets are critical, okay? And how many of those then do you really, I mean, this is a, a key thing, right. right? How many of those, and this is where we start getting into, so this, is, this is probably a good answer for you. I, I know there's like, so hold on. Between 15 and 10 critical systems. Okay, so 15 and 10 critical systems, then break those down into parent-child relationships. This is, this, is, this is very critical. So you've got gauges, but then gauges are fed by sensors. Do I need every sensor? No, not all the time, actually. Because I could have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of sensors, but I actually just need to get the gauges tagged. And so there's a balancing act there on how many things that you would tag. So some of that can get done manually. So really only, you're only tagging what you call gauges. And gauges are measurement devices? Um, a gauge can... I mean, it can go in lots of different places. I mean, on valves, on, I mean, you've got lots of different types of gauges. Just something that has, that, that has a number. That is correct. Now, but here's the thing, though. If you want me to do all they the sensors, have, we'll do all the sensors, they right? They have no sensors and no gauges in any of the buildings. Okay. That's fair. So then, then, it just gets down to, then it just gets down to say, you have 100 buildings. Okay, well, tell me how many build, major building systems you have, then I'll break that into how many assets it is. And then if you say, okay, it's... 10,000 assets for all those buildings. Now we can start to price that. Now, here's the thing. Are you going to go in there and manually do all 10,000? No. We'll start, but then we'll learn, and then we'll start to be able to do, have basically signature and pattern detection, which you guys have probably read about, and that's actually getting easier and easier to do. Within the photometry or within, within the photometry Between the laser? That and then, honestly, honestly, I'm more interested in doing it in GIS, and that's where the round robin kind of comes in because... If we can do it there with the imagery in there, then that's a, that's, that's, you know what? We used to say that's holy grail or whatever, so but, but that's not holy grail anymore. So, so okay. Yeah. So, very good question, though. And that, that's available, this stuff is available? Today. Yep. Yep. I mean, look, we're a service provider. Um, you know, I'll underscore that we definitely have, you know, we've, we've got some experts. We've got people with decades of experience, decade to decades, um, both on the facilities side and on the utility side. A lot of us used to work for Esri, or a lot of us used to work in industry. I mean, you know, now we're, you know, we work for a services group. Um, but um, this is, in some ways, it, I'll say this, I feel like it's a little bit new frontier because the one thing you didn't hear me talking about, which you've heard a lot of people talk about at the conference, is space management, occupancy management. I mean, all the space data. For me... I get that, and it's, it, it's interesting, but I mean, for this particular client, um, that's awesome, and there's a whole group at this client that worries about that kind of stuff, but I'm worried about the stuff that has to be maintained every day that keeps the environment the way it needs to be, whether it's for the people or whether it's for the things that are inside your environment that you're concerned about. And, um, and that's just a swim lane we've chosen to go in, and I think it's got great potential. It's, well, it's proving that way, anyway. So, John, uh, kind of dovetailing off this question, is, is the secret sauce the only thing that's kind of proprietary, meaning that you're using kind of off-the-shelf stuff? Yeah, just, it's process and workflow. Okay. Yeah. So like you're using the Esri product, you're using the 
I'm using Azure products. I'm using some Autodesk, some Recap, some Revit, okay. right, as required. Um, honestly, a lot of special coding that supports all this. The special coding is like to get to that. There is not. Once you have the data, it kind of is there? I'd say there is not, but then there's, there's an exception when it comes to scripting. Okay. But that's, if, you, if we're talking the same language, and I think we are, then that's, yeah. Okay. It's not so like I'm having to build new apps. There's also the shelf software that's doing automated tagging based on like image recognition? We're getting there. <laughs> We're getting there. We're getting there. I don't know. We got folks that are gonna. We got folks that are gonna listen to this recording too. You know, it's like, <laughs> come on now. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. They supply the metadata of the facility equipment to you. Yes. Yes. That's a very good question. That's an excellent question. They delivered it to me in a spreadsheet, basically as an extract from the asset management system. Yeah, and honestly, you know, when we're scanning, whether it's fast rolling cart or whether you're doing tripod, you're going to have a cart with with a um, with a laptop open, and you're just systematically going through it. And honestly, that's the part that takes a lot of the time. But you know, it's not like it, you know, dollars per hour. That's that's that doesn't cost very much. Good question. Awesome. Any more questions? Great questions. Hopefully this has been beneficial to you guys and you find it pretty interesting. Um, we're enjoying doing the work and if we can help you, certainly let me know. Thanks. Yeah.